In this video, we're going to learn how to use the simulation to determine the effect of mass and distance on the force of gravity. So under Unit 2, you will see two links that you need to open. The first one is the Gravity Force Lab link, and the second one is the Page 18 Gravity Simulation Google Doc. So please open those two. So when you open up the Gravity Force Lab simulation, you will see that you can change a few things. You can change mass one. You can change mass two. And you can even change the distance between them. Down here, you'll see some other options. Um, you can measure the force using the decimal no notation. So you can see the decimal notation. You can change it to the scientific notation and you can hide it. But for our purposes, you're gonna be using the decimal notation and the scientific notation. One thing I do want you to do though, is I want you to have the uh, checkbox next to constant size uh, checked on because mass actually shouldn't change the size of the uh, ball here it should only change the density of the ball, which they did a really good job, where if you increase the mass, you'll see that it gets darker because there's more molecules in there. And when you decrease the mass, it gets lighter because there's fewer molecules in there. Now that you've played around with the simulation a bit, let's get to the worksheet. So this is the page 18 worksheet. You can print this out and put it into a comp book, or you can fill this out on the computer. So each time we do uh, the simulation, we need to make sure our variables are accounted for. So for the first part, we want to change the mass one, so of the blue ball, and that would be our independent variable. Our mass one can be 500 kilograms or 1,000 kilograms. And when we do this, we want to measure the force of gravity. That's our measurement. That's our dependent variable. So we want to see does the force increase or does the force decrease. But to make a good experiment, you need to have some constant variables. So in this case, let's keep mass two the same. We're going to keep mass two 500 kilograms both times. And we're going to keep distance the same. We're going to keep it at three meters both times. So for a good experiment, what you want to do is you want to have one independent variable, which in this case would be mass one, and everything else needs to be the same. So mass two has to be the same, and distance has to be the same. So let's start finding the force in terms of newtons. So the first thing we should do is we should click the constant size box so that the size of the ball doesn't change. And let's set the mass for ball one to 500 kilograms. And let's set, and let's set the mass for ball two to 500 kilograms. But as you can see, the distance is still too far. So let's move them closer together three meters apart and let's read our force so as you can see the force of the blue ball attracted to the red ball is actually exactly the same as the force of the red ball attracted to the blue ball because that's how gravity works it's attractive in both ways but the measurement here is 0 0.0000001 eight five three so we can stop at eight five three let's write that down zero point zero 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 one eight five three newtons in scientific notation we can click here and we can see how it is in scientific notation if you remember from last year scientific notation is a way for scientists to write really big numbers or really small numbers 
in an easier way. We used it for very big numbers with the years of the Earth. We're going to use it for very, very small numbers for the force of gravity. And what you're essentially doing is you're moving the decimal spot. One, two, three, four, five, six spots. So now it becomes 1.85 times 10 to the negative 6. Because what you did was you moved the decimal. One, two, three, four, five, six spots to make it the scientific notation. So we're going to write down 1.85 times 10 to the, and there's a couple ways you could go to the negative 6. You can use the caret, negative 6, or you can use the superscript. So if you go to format, text, superscript, negative 6. Make sure you turn that off. And make sure you have the, the units there. Okay. Newton is the one that came up with uh, the mathematical calculations for gravity, so we named the force Newton's N. All right, so that's our first data point. We'll see that the blue and red ball attract each other with this much force. But what happens if we increase the mass one? What happens if we change mass one to a thousand kilograms, but we keep mass two the same and we keep the distance the same? So all we're doing is changing one thing. What happens to the force of gravity? Should it go higher or should it go lower? So if we change mass one to a thousand kilograms, so there's a lot more matter inside that sphere, we'll see that the two figures are straining a little bit more. And let's see if the force of gravity got higher or lower. And so we see here that it actually got higher. So let's write this down. 0 0.0000037070. 0 0.0003707 newtons. And let's do it in scientific notation. 3.71 times 10 to the negative 6. 3.71 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons, or 3.71 times 10 to the superscript negative 6 superscript newtons. So do the force of gravity get larger or smaller? Well, we saw that it increased. In fact, if we increase the mass times 2, the force has also increased times 2. So by doubling the mass, we double the force. Now that we collected the data, we should answer this question. When the mass of object 1 increased, what happened to the gravitational force between the two objects? When the mass of object 1 increased, the gravitational force between the two objects also increased. And so that's how we can calculate what happens when we change mass 1. What you need to now do then is to figure out what happens if we change mass 2. Does the gravitational force increase or decrease? And answer these two questions. And also what happens if the distance increases? What happens to the gravitational force? Do you think it's going to increase or decrease? And then answer the two questions. All right, good luck with the worksheets.